Salvete amici, di mortales, quid novi TV. Hi, this is called Pun Piso. And I want to explain today where all this idea of Christmas, uh, Santa Claus, uh, and, uh, and the festivals of, uh, of the Hanukkah, the Hajj, originated from, and the meaning of it. What does it symbolize? Notice that my hat is all the way up like an erect penis. It doesn't come down. Well, original, it was called, the Romans called it the Pileus. And it was, uh, it was were worn by everyone during the Saturnalia. In other words, the festival of Saturn, Father Time, in which this is the honor of this festival, which will mutate centuries later into the Christmas, Christ Mass. Saturnalia, the parties of Saturn, began December 17th to the 25th, the winter solstice. Great festivals all over the Roman Empire. And of course, they adopted a lot of things, a lot of elements from other religions, Egypt, Hellenism, and all that. But I'll talk about the Saturnalia and the meaning of Santa Claus. This conical cup, the Pileus, which is a red cup, of Santa Claus is very is also the ones used by the Roman priests, the Flamins. And of course the Catholic Church will copy. They copy everything <laughs> with the with the red, supposedly be the here's the Nazi Pope here, Paus XII, who uh, when I was 10 years old, he uh, hit me with his ring during a private audience. And uh, this uh, here, the these are three cities with these hats that represent the wall of the cities, which copied by the cardinals with their hats, which is a weird shape of them. Uh, here is a museum of the Civiltà Romana. You see the, here are the altars. Uh, the Romans have altars for many, many gods. And um, it, it was not until uh, the son of God Augustus that actually the altars were transformed into a cube, something that you can go inside. Now, the altars, uh, the other package is a cube. And a cube is the same as Kaaba in Mecca and uh, is the word of the goddess Kibele. Uh, which means cube, represented by two lions. Here is the, uh, one of the uh, gods of the Oscuri wearing a pileus, uh, a conical cap of the priest with a star on the top. The uh, temple of, uh, of uh, Mars Ultor with the, with the altar also. Uh, this is the example of the apex, which is the, the cap worn by the priest of the Roman Empire with the different gods. Uh, you see this? This is imitated... Uh, by the Catholic Church that wears the same thing. And also in the, the Kaiser Wilhelm in Germany, they all, you know, he was considered divine too, anointed by the grace of God being emperor of Germany. So he's wearing a, a conical cap to a, a, an apex. Here I'm at the Arapakis Augusti, the emperor of Augustus, which is an altar you walk inside. It's a cube, it's the goddess Kibele. That's where the, the Muslims have the, um, the Kaaba and the Jews, the Tiflin, the little cube that they wear on their heads come from that. Here is the forum of the uh, in the Roman Empire in about the third century, a model. And you see here the for the Roman forum with the different temples. And uh, interesting you have here this is the temple of uh, of uh, Concord, the temple of Vespasian, the divine Vespasian. And on the bottom of that, what I'm pointing out, there is a temple of Saturn. And that's where the Saturnalia comes from, the god of time. And uh, uh, it's very interesting that you can see this this tremendous festival that originated in the Roman Forum. It's a very ancient festival. Here I am in 2008 at the Roman Forum, visiting the ruins, of course. And uh, the Catholic Church just ruined everything. They have destroyed everything, burned books, uh, stolen all the marble uh, for the churches. I mean, you can hardly see anything here anymore. That it was the, the, glor the glorious uh, Roman Empire was huge, it was vast. Uh, with many provinces. Here is the Temple of, of Saturn, Saturn at the end, which was also the, the treasury of the empire. They kept the money there. The, um, uh, the, uh, uh, here is a reconstruction of the Temple of Saturn. Okay. Let me uh, narrate about uh, the um, festival of the Saturnalia. Now, uh, the god Saturn, it was a father time, during the winter, uh, everything died. The only thing that uh, remained was the evergreen, 
and the palm trees, and they were considered sacred, or the gods protect them, they didn't die. Kronos uh, was represented in the temple as a, during this winter, you know, uh, beginning of the 17th, in the temple of Saturn, which by the way was also the treasury. That's where they keep the treasure, the Roman Empire kept the treasure there. In, in the ancient world, all the temples were treasure houses. That's where you keep your money. They didn't have it back because it was given to the uh, to the uh, to the gods, like they do today in the Catholic Church and everything. Synagogues, mosques—they all have millions and millions and billions of dollars that people give them. <laughs> the gullible <laughs> Theotar did. Uh, anyway, the um, Temple of Saturn. The god Saturn was bound with wool, so he didn't move. He was to stay there the image of the god. And uh, it was only, they only untie him and let him leap on between the 17th and the 25th of the Saturnalia. The Saturnalia was a, a festival type of thing that uh, they made candies and they gave a special little sweets and little cakes uh, for, the, for children. And uh, the god Saturn was, uh, right on the temple you have the incense with the uh, candelabras of the Vestal Virgins, with anybody goes to the temple will believe there is a synagogue because it's, <laughs> there's menorahs there. But there were this time nine candles. You know, the seven gods, but on the Saturnalia, the nine days, so nine candles. So, and the, um, right in the temple of Saturn, uh, the god was also represented by a baby. It's just like being in a manger. It's just like having baby Jesus and um, Isis and the mother goddess and the other gods and the animals. Like in the Egyptian pantheon, they're all represented by animals. You know, like the crocodile and you have the ibis and you have the, uh, uh, the, you have the falcon and you have all these animals. They were gods, especially the, the, um, the soul was represented by a bird. Uh, by, uh, by, by the mummy had a, a head, a human head, uh, 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 the bird had a human head, so they were all going to the messengers of the god, so they were like, anything that fly was messenger of the god. So you have the temple of Saturn, you have the image of the god, unbound, and then uh, you have a, a baby, a naked baby, but see the baby is the peepees, the penis Christ, the, uh, the creator of orgasm was sacred, they were sacred, venerated. They are little babies, naked babies, representing the gods in the firmament, the young gods. So this is uh, this is what's happening in the uh, at this time. People over there and do the prayers and all that, but at the same time there was a young baby in a manger type of thing with all these fruits and all these vegetables and animals there, because the, at the time the vegetation had died. And they wanted to actually, and they were copies of vegetation. In other words, no, no, no real fruits because they, you know, how are you going to keep them? So uh, they were hoping that the guy will actually bring that, uh, bring life again, which he will resurrect again this spring. But so you had the old man, that was the guy that was dying, and then the new new guy, the the baby there, which was also the sun. It was equivalent. It was equivalent to a sun god because all this. All these uh, gods were all related to the sun god. Um, even the moon was related to the sun god and all that. Now, this is very interesting. Well, during the Saturnale was a time of merriment. It's, it's like a carnival, like Mardi Gras. Uh, the cakes, little sweets were given to children. They gave, they gave gifts, they were very sacred. Um, then uh, the masters and the slave, they assume different roles and they exchange clothes and, and all. So everybody was very happy and they were all, they were all praying to different gods and they were saying, Io Saturnalia, Io Saturnalia, Io Saturnalia. It's like saying Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas and the Christmas carols and all that. Same thing, but it was all with different gods, which make the atmosphere very tolerant. You didn't have to believe only on one god because it's, it's terrible. It causes intolerance. Well, at the same time, in ancient times, there was human sacrifices 4,000, 5,000 years ago. Uh, if something went wrong, you even sacrifice an animal or you actually have a, uh, uh, a man 
actually from a good family that are actually going to implore to the gods to save the kingdom or save the area, you know, if it was a year again. So actually he was ritually sacrificed and they will kill him in many ways. You can find that in England, in the bogs, uh, people that are bound and, and, and all that mummified remains of these people. They were actually, they were not, uh, they were not killed like, you know, by somebody trying to rob them. No, they were sacrificed so they become messengers of the God to talk to the God over there, to things. Well, during the Saturnalia, there is a little twist. The Saturnalia had, uh, during that time, they, any person that was condemned to death was going to be the messenger. And uh, many volunteer. So you will have this, it become the king of the Saturnalia. He would, he would uh, uh, sit in a throne, uh, that he will have all the great wine, everybody will help him and will serve him. And many of the families in Rome, uh, people will come around and, and just like, like children in the mall. They're, uh, they're going to ask Santa Claus to give him certain gifts and certain, certain things and, oh, give me the health. Oh, I lost my job. I went. Exactly the same thing. So this guy was giving anything he wanted and people went over there and give him, uh, oh, my, my parents are very sick. Uh, please, still gods, still the, our gods. And Esculapius, the god of health, please, when you see him do this, the other guy said, I, you know, I'm going to go on expedition. I want to win this battle. Uh, please give the uh, talk to God Mars and uh, Aris to actually help me. And things like that. And on and on and on. So during all those nine days, they will actually give the guy the Santa Claus. <laughs> that was, everybody was wearing a Pileus, uh, this conical cap. And they will doing all that. Now, guess what happened? Right on the 25th, he was going to be sacrificed. It right was the birth day. of the sun god. He had a great nine days. <laughs> but then they will take a gladius, a priest. He washes the hands because water is sacred. You know, from the god Neptune is a gift of Neptune. So you sacrifice, you know, you you watch, you put the, the, the Vestal Virgins are right there, and all, and then ritualistic in a platform, he would be actually be killed. It is the birth of the sun god. And his spirit will actually ascend to heaven with all the messages. That was a cubic, <laughs> like a Santa Claus right in the Saturnalia. Now, also in the Saturnalia, uh, the... Uh, uh, it's a very old festival. And it changed with time. Any more things were added to, and then Sol Invictus and all that in the Aurelian and all the everything changed and changed. Centuries changed the festival was all and it would become Christmas. You know, when the Christians took over, you know, Constantine. It would transform, everything transformed. And they start, of course, you know, the church was burning books, they were uh, adding things to these fairy tales or these stories, uh, changing, burning, uh, destroying temples or building churches on top of temples everywhere and collapse, everything collapsed. They start burning libraries, so they start deceiving people. So, you know, there was a, a, a Catholic Church, uh, Universal, would become the, uh, the created Christianity. So that was, that was the Saturnalia, one of hundreds of festivals during the year that the Romans had. Everything was a festival, which now you have the fe same festivals in the Catholic Church. With different names, of course. Everything changed. Everything evolves and changes. This was the, the Saturnalia. And one blood sacrifice that tied all the religions together, the so-called Abrahamic religions, was the sacrifice of the Lord and Savior, Julius Christ. That, they gave his blood to save the people. And that was the key. And the Saturnalia would eventually mutate into Christmas and also the Hanukkah. And eventually in the 7th century, with all this twist and confusion, the Hajj. But they do have the blood sacrifice. Uh, you have in the uh, 
uh, Christmas, you have flagellation, penance, sin, whipping yourself, silly. The Muslims do doing Ashura, just about a really an interesting festival. They also flagellate themselves, and of course the Jews, uh, circumcision, bloodletting, <laughs> cut their peepees, the penis Christ, unrobe the head of the god penis Christ, expose him. <laughs> interesting. Let me tell you something interesting about the ancient gods, in ancient times. The Roman Empire borrowed from all the religions, creating an immense dogma of religion. From the Egyptian and Hellenism, they combined everything. They even had the sacred books, the Sibylline oracles. It was an amazing, amazing civilization with amazing government, with many religions, many gods, and that's what gave the Roman Empire tolerance and intellectual prowess. Many, many gods, many things. They're the unburnt scientists of people that know things, like the Christ psychotics do. Not. It's an interesting thing about the gods. They follow Pythagoras. The gods were geometrical shapes in the sky. So they have to give geometrical shapes. That's the reason uh, Octavius, the son of God, Augustus, he created the altar in the shape of a cube. Because the goddess Kibele, nobody can really imagine what, what she would look like. We know that it was a woman, but it was in the sky, like Venus. So they imagine it as a cube. Like the sun god, it was simple. It was a circle. That's the sun god. But what about Kibele? Cube. And uh, Augustus was amazing. He created the Arapakis, and all the altars become squares, cubes, sacred area, cube. And then, of course, that's where eventually you will have the uh, Hanukkah, which they are so involved in the mother goddess and the Jewish mother goddess, which uh, is all related to a cube. The reason the uh, Jews wear the tefillin, those little cubes that they have in the head and the forearm, they do all these prayers, all related to a geometrical shape of God. It's like the Muslims. They don't like God to be represented with anything except with the symbols, with the Arabic symbols written from right to left. They're all over the place. A person, if you depict the Prophet Muhammad with a like a like human or any any uh, anthropomorphic shape, they'll kill you, because the guy is supposed to be imagined, and they of course imagine in geometrical shapes. That comes Pythagoras. <laughs> See, sacred geometry, and they they all the numbers and you know and. The triangle and the god is represented. You see the Masonic and the Io god is just an eye, and then the triangle. It's all come from sacred geometry and geometria. So uh, then you have the Kaaba, same thing. But they're all related and they all have blood sacrifice, as you can see here. Let's start with zombie Jesus, torture, flagellation, the same with blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he's corrupting all the children in America, making idiots, stupid, deluded morons stuck in the Middle Ages, sadomasochistic theotards. That's what's happening with Christianity, corrupting the mind with this stupid garbage, sadomasochism depicted here. Look at all this. All the blood and all the retards. And just like today, it's like the like the uh, you know, Christians and the Muslims. The Hajj is the foremost of all Muslim rituals. There's a meteorite in the Kaaba. You see the Roman temple right under ground. Here's Muslim Ashura, blood festival, the sacrifice of Ali, which was nothing else but another mutation of the sacrifice of Julius Caesar. Islam is a symbolic act that transcends barriers of time, barriers of pain, and 
like interview the psycho Christian uh, children, the doctor spits barriers of age. No. Be careful, I don't want blood and pee on my white robes. Notice a Jew, a cube over his head, and uh, this is the fourth century, and then the Tiflin cubes. Well, everything I say is back out with historical facts. I connect the dots, and I can see the big picture of the whole thing. And I can prove it, no problem. Just ask me, I will show you where it's at. Religious beliefs is a mental illness and no need in this, in this uh, 21st century. Christianity is the worst mental stagnation and a psychopathy ever. And it's a disease. And these people infected with Christianity, Christ psychosis, this disease is the worst of all of them that's ruining the planet. Uh, must be placed in a mental institution along with schizophrenics. Let's help the guys. They're, ex they're lost. They're stuck in the Middle Ages. And that's not a good place to be. Just patch it your arm.